The North. Known for its industry, hard-working and innovative people, we are the engineers of the past and always look for solutions for the future. Our Creative North wants to celebrate that and show the world what we can do. Hi, I'm Rob Earnshaw and welcome to Our Creative North, a show that celebrates the creative and digital media sector in the north of England. Now, there's a common misconception that you can't make any money out of being creative, but did you know that the creative and digital media sector is the second largest contributor to the UK economy? This show is all about celebrating that, and actually we're going to go out and try and find how two individuals have actually made a business out of their passion. Today we're visiting Mark from Vero, who's got one of the smallest cameras in the world, and he's just landed a contract with NASA, and we're going to send one of our creative pioneers, Lucy, to go and meet somebody who's made money out of taking photographs. My name's Lucy Carruthers and I'm from Washington. I love acting and I love modelling and photography. My name is uh, Jade Turnbull and I'm from Durham and I'm a fashion photographer. So like any budding artist, having photos taken of them is something they love to do. But they'll probably waste it on selfies. I know that's what I would do. So this is the studio we're using. Here's my camera here. So it's a Nikon D600. Mm -hmm. Had a Nikon since I started photography, so naturally this is the one that I always go for. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to show you the basics of the camera. Right, so on here you've got shutter speed, which is basically how fast the shutter closes. Okay. So the longer that it takes, the more light it's going to let in. So you've got ISO as mm -hmm. well, and that's sensitivity to light. Okay. So the, the higher it is, the more sensitive it is to the light, but the higher it is, the more grainy the image is going to be, so okay. you don't want it too high. And then you've got your f-stop here, which is basically aperture. So I don't know much about like photography, so mm -hmm. what's the difference between shooting digitally and film? Well, film, there's a lot more process to it, mm -hmm. definitely. Like, obviously digital, you can see the back of the camera, you can see your settings, obviously you can see if it's worked. Yeah. While film is, it's, it, you, you can go and it can be totally wrong, you've got to go through the whole process again. Um, but I mean, I do like it because it's got that sort of effect to it where it looks like nostalgic and I, yeah. I like that effect that it has. But it's, it's the time and the money that goes into doing film work. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> it just so, costs so much. Yeah. I like the fact that I can experiment more with digital. You mm -hmm. can't really experiment as much with film because obviously the amount that you pay for like the film and then obviously the processing and actually processing it through. Mm -hmm. um, like the, that's the difference really. Like, so obviously you get to the end and if you haven't got it right, you can't really go back and mm -hmm. experiment exactly the same, like, especially if it's a different day. So like looking at your portfolio, you do a lot of retouching, the mm -hmm. fantasy side of it. Yes. Where do you get your influences from for some of them shoots? Well, actually, like the, um, my first ever sort of inspiration that got me into photography mm -hmm. was a uh, Lara Jade photography. Yeah. And she wasn't a huge photographer at the time. She was actually very young. She was only fifteen mm -hmm. when I when I sort of first saw her work. Um, but she was she was working in Milan and and just all these amazing places doing yeah. these really amazing high fashion editorial shoots. And I just thought I want to be that. Yeah. Like that's what I want to do definitely. So what are we doing today then? Well, basically, we're going to start in studio. We are going to go out on location for a bit to take some uh, location shots because studio lighting and natural lighting is completely different. Okay, cool. But we're going to start in this studio. So I'm going to get you to stand over here. Okay. Probably about here. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you how to use just one simple light. So as, as if you're using it for a, a fashion website or you just want something really simple to make the clothes stand out. I always start with basic basic things it was so shutter speed is normally one point wait like, one two five for shutter speed um an f stop normally eight because obviously everything's in focus right um and then iso normally 200 to 320 is okay. generally what i go for in studio anyway so if i just take this photo Jake gets down to doing what she does best, taking photos. And Lucy gets down to doing what she does best, her duck face for Facebook selfies. Right, so it's your turn now. You're going to take my camera and take a couple of photos of me. Let's see how that goes. Do not put that down next? Okay, perfect. So, right, so where do you want me? Where I'll send them for? In the middle. In the middle here? Yeah. 
Now it's Lucy's turn to take the photos. Hopefully she's listened to everything Jade said. Isn't it great to be able to do these opportunities all through us? Great at North. Nice, no yeah, nice and clean, yeah, definitely. See, that's great. The only other thing, once you've got the settings down, right. especially for a website, you've got the settings, so you don't need to really move about too much as long as you get them stand in the right place. Okay. The only thing after that is directing okay. the model, because you want to make the model feel comfortable. So, yeah. you know, you don't really want to be silent, <laughs> you want to have that conversation, you know, feel, make them feel open and, you know, yeah. sort of relaxed so that they, they can model without the sort of so any anxiety about it. Conscious yeah. of themselves. Yeah, you don't want them to feel self-conscious. So, yeah. you know, you want to make them feel good. So, you know, any compliments, going, oh, that's a great position or yeah. anything like that, and going, oh, just twist that way, that looks really nice. And, you know, it's just it's just using... That positive yeah, energy. absolutely, yeah. yeah, to try and get it out of the models. And then that's when you can sort of try and find their emotions as well. So the girls do a little bit of dress up. Though I didn't think there was anything wrong with that Creative North t-shirt. That's what I wear every day. We talked to Jade about doing something that she really loves for a living. I love doing voiceover work, but I wish I didn't have to do it in my car. Knowing if you want a hobby to be a job is quite a difficult thing. I think you've actually got to get in there and do it to know if you like it. It is very difficult to sort of go from personal work to professional work. Because so I think when it's personal work, you experiment a lot more and you can, you can make them mistakes. And sometimes the mistakes obviously turn into something great, so you know, you can't complain. But because it's your own work, you feel like you can do that. While sort of working for someone else, you have to, it's not your view, it's not what you see or how you want it to look, it's how they want it to look. So quite a difficult transition going from right this is exactly how I want the image to look and I've got the image in my head of exactly how it needs to be but when it's a client it's their image and it's very hard to try and translate that. Fantastic I think we're ready to go outside now. Should we go outside and get some nice looking okay, Let's get started. Definitely. So off to Marsden Bay in South Shields. I love a good rock formation, me. I do love shooting in studio, but you, it's so like clean and crisp. Really like location stuff purely because I think like for de like you know you can have such low depth of field and you can basically have that Hollywood still feel to them.
its his place. I was a bit nervous at first, like I don't know if I'm gonna compare to all the really cool clients that she's had. Like she's worked with like the BBC and she's done loads of stuff for Large Doll magazine, which is one of my favourite magazines. So I was like, oh I don't know, but she's made us feel really comfortable. I'm really happy to be a model. It's an experience that probably not a lot of people have, so I'm grateful for Kurt not giving me that experience. Now off to our business of the week, which is Frio Innovation, founded by Mark Vernon and based right here in Walls End. Frio Innovation specialise in tiny cameras and use the technology from our mobile phones. One of their first customers was NASA. My name is Mark Vernon and I'm um, uh, with Frio Innovation and we are a video technology company. We specialise in miniature cameras and camera interface technology. We differ slightly from some camera manufacturers because we're aiming at companies that will integrate in our board and the camera into their finished product. This is, the, this is a miniature camera that, that we're, we're working with at the moment. Uh, you can see it's, it's very small. And we, we make the electronics that enable that camera to stream uncompressed, high definition video onto a PC. What, what, what we've done, and when I started the company, we, we kind of found an opportunity that we wanted to explore. And one of those was uh, a new camera module that was coming onto the market, which is the camera module you see here. A lot of people previous, in previous jobs had said to me, uh, as, a, as my function of R&D manager, why can't we have the camera out of our mobile phone? Because it's very small, it's actually relatively good image quality, it's low power, all, all these things. Well, the, the, the problem with it is you cannot get hold of those cameras. At the same time, there's a trend, or has been a trend, for uh, USB 3 interfacing coming onto the market. So combining these two is, is kind of what we tried to, try to do. The manufacturer of the camera module is Sony. Now, we manufacture the USB 3 to support it. When I told them about my first prototype, I sent an email, and within 30 seconds I had about three emails back from various people in Sony saying, we're really very interested can you get a sample over to Japan, mm -hmm. which is what we did. So I got a sample over there and uh, it just so happens that the Vice President of Sales for Sony US was at the same meeting and picked up on it and said yes this is what we need to to sell our camera. So we actually were kind of enabling the new camera to actually reach into some real industrial applications. Well where I would like to take the company is that there's actually no UK manufacturer of cameras in, in, at all. There is, there is not a single camera manufacturer in the UK left. Um, I would like to become a, a camera manufacturer, so moving from just supplying the interface, perhaps supplying or passing on a camera module, I'd like to do ev everything. So we want to take the, make, make the actual camera element and, and the interface element. We've also been approached by the University of Pisa to produce um, augmented reality goggles for surgical procedures. That basically means that if you have a medical, like a CAT scan or an X-ray, with two small cameras on your glasses uh, and two screens on the inside of your glasses, you can have a system where you can merge the information from the CAT scan into what you're actually seeing. So you can kind of underlay and it, and it guides, it helps guide the surgeon as to where to make the incision. We're Rio Innovation and we support Rio North. Um, Businesses like Rio Innovation and individuals like Mark Vernon really push the boundaries of technology. And it's amazing this sort of thing is done right here in the North. It's a sort of innovation that makes our region great. Well done, Mark. If you've got the mind of a tiny goldfish, then you won't remember that we sent Lucy along to heaven to do some shooting with commercial photographer Jay Turnbull. Well, basically, I was always the child who uh, took photos of everyone and annoyed everyone, basically. <laughs> and it was only really after sixth form that uh, I decided to make a career out of it. Basically, I have brought, well, I've brought my first ever publication, which is obviously was a big deal to me at the time, so... 
I have to show you that one. And that was that one there. It's quite funny, because when I look back, I'm like, you know, the retouch and compared to me now is just like so bad. But, uh, you know, at the time it was just, you know, that was how I retouched. But you live and learn. I used to read the magazine. I used to really look up to all these photographers and thought, oh, I might send my work in. And they never really used to accept it. And that was the first one they accepted. So that was a big deal, big deal for me. This was my first feature. So Digital SLR Photography Magazine naturally used to read this um, all the time <laughs> when I had the time to. Um, this was my first little interview that I'd done about being a photographer. So again, big deal for me. Um, and it was, it was good because I didn't approach, I didn't approach them to, to put these images in. Um, they, I, had, I think I had one of the images on their website just as a reader showcase. They'd seen it and said that they'd absolutely love to post some of my work. Basically, this shoot was done with uh, this really amazing makeup artist, again, from the Northeast, um, Lo Diaz. Really just amazing. I mean, what she can do with people's faces is unreal. Um, and we basically chose a couple of models that we'd worked with together before, so we already knew how to sort of work with them. Um, and try to make it really versatile. So obviously Leah was a, uh, you know, blonde, sort of naturally pretty. So we thought, you know what, let's, let's go really creative and give her an afro and totally, you know, change the look of her so that she doesn't look who she is. She looks like a completely different person. And obviously using color and makeup to really sort of make them stand out. Um, and this image here, um, we, did, uh, we did a whole sort of shoot on this gold thing. And the rest of that shoot ended up being used in another magazine, um, which was great because they, again, I didn't sort of approach them. They, they just sort of saw the image. One of the images, I think it might have been that one or it might have been another. And uh, they just loved them that much. And the sort of theme of the magazine was a uh, golden, golden age. It's called Golden Age magazine. Um, and it was the golden issue. So naturally that was uh, called the golden girl because she had obviously gold leaf everywhere, so it was just perfect. I absolutely love the North. I just don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, I love the people, I love the scenery. Um, I love the fact that there's just hidden talent everywhere and like no one ever thinks of, you know, Newcastle or Durham or something or anything like that. They always think London. I think a lot of people get told, I mean, I got told to move down to London if I wanted to be a successful photographer. But then I think, why? Because <laughs> I, love, I love the Northeast and I, would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of moving. Um, and I just think there's so many untouched talent that you can use up here. While in London, there's so many people who are wanting the same thing and wanting to be top photographers. And I think, why do you have to move somewhere else to be a top photographer? Why can't you be in your hometown and become a top photographer in your hometown? Lardy Da is a, like, not, it's not new, but it's fairly new magazine. So this was their first issue. And uh, luckily I had, had the pleasure of doing the front cover for it and also the inside editorial as well, which for me was like dream come true to do sort of such a big job for a magazine. Um, for me, that was, that was the first sort of thing where I thought, great, like, I'm actually getting to where I want to be now. Um, so I got, a, I got a photograph, Miss Frankie Wilde, who is just an amazing person and she's an amazing model. This shoot was Middleton Lodge and that, that was an amazing place. So you can hire the whole place out for, for anything really. It's just, it's just divine. And um, she was obviously a burlesque performer, Frankie Wilde. And it was great because she, she just brought out a burlesque, of, as you can see, where she's a fox. And uh, it was like no one had seen this, this burlesque show. So it was like, this was her basically going, this is my new act. And it was, it was really cool to see it before anyone else did. I think the unique selling point for me, I hope, <laughs> is because I bring the real people out, hopefully. Well, that's, that's my aim, is to bring sort of that real person out rather than someone getting in front of a camera and sort of just smiling or sort of just doing what they're told. I, I quite like people being natural, so a lot of the time I'll say that I'm just doing test shots and I'll actually just be taking shots because I know for a fact I'll get the best shots in that shot because I know that they're being themselves rather than trying to be who they think I want them to be. My most recent work's definitely been with uh, Tallulah Love. Um, I mean, her stuff's absolutely amazing. She's basically a lingerie designer. She designs everything herself and she's like one of the most nicest people I've ever met in my life. And uh, we, we've worked together for a while. Um, just, I mean, I think I started doing free stuff for her just because I loved her stuff. And I thought I'd be, it'd be great to get in with this designer. I met her and she was, she was just as crazy as me, which was great. And uh, we just hit it off really well. So every sort of shoot that she's needed to do, She's called me, so it just goes to show that, you know, if you, if you get along with people, then they will rehire you and then they'll, they'll also put your name out there as well. 
But uh, to load of love is again, big, big fashion stuff. So that's great. And all these photos have gone to Paris and some have gone to Germany. And it's just, it's great to know that like me work's actually getting out there. Another creative individual has turned her hobby into something that she loves. And to be honest, she doesn't take a bad picture herself. She should come and do my Facebook page. Now back to Rob for some final thoughts. So there you have it, two fantastic individuals who've made money and a career out of their passion. Now, if you're passionate about creating digital media, whether it's film, web, broadcast, photography, please get in touch. Creative North have teamed up with Creative Pioneers to deliver apprentices in the creative and digital media sector. So if you're age 16 to 25 and I'm looking for a job, please get in touch with us by following the link below to our website. We'll see you next week.